From having a significant bounty on your head while you're exploring the galaxy to being able to head back home to see your parents and stay in your childhood room, Starfield adds a little bit more depth to your story experience by adding a host of traits that can either complement your journey or make it crazier than Russell Crowe reading a Robert E. Howard novel on the island of dead dolls. All of these 17 traits are pretty cool in their own ways, but there are some that stand out above the rest. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the best starting traits so you can make the best of your first playthrough and develop your character to its full potential. So let's get ready to see what these traits have to offer, push some more power to the grab drive, and get after it. Merging an interesting role-playing concept with some additional narrative and some fancy loot, kid stuff is without a doubt one of the best traits in Starfield. Your mom and your dad are still alive and all set up in the residential area of New Atlantis. This may seem a little corny and not worth your precious credits since the catch is that they still need your help in the form of 500 credits per week to afford to live in style. Think of this small fee as a long-term investment that promises rare but special events that are often triggered when your parents get some good news which happens to reach you in one form or another. From dad handing you Sir Livingston's pistol for joining Constellation, or gifting you a shippy one during his weekly poker game. And let's not forget mom who gives you Grand Grand's armor from when she was in the service, which is likely better than what you're wearing now. With all of Starfield's main companion characters being good natured in one form or another, it makes Empath a stellar choice. When you earn brownie points with each of these characters, which often means being nice, donating ship parts to stranded settlers, or acting in a way that aligns with them, you're granted some additional affinity boosts as a result. When you do something your companions like, from joining the Freestar Rangers to responding to empath dialogue, it grants you a temporary bonus to combat effectiveness. On the opposite end of that spectrum, the effectiveness will drop for a period of time if you do something that conflicts with their values or what they stand for. So no matter no matter how pissed off you get when you're hailed by a ship that's concerned about your ship's extended warranty, wiping it out of existence could put you in the doghouse for quite some time. On top of combat effectiveness, being in sync with your companions affords you a bonus called self-esteem, which grants you some bonuses to persuasion. The opposite being self-doubt, which reduces critical hit chance and success during speech challenges. Hidden at the very bottom of the alphabetical list, you'll find what is arguably the best trait in the game. While the idea of being wanted across the galaxy, which compels more people to kill you in a game where you could get jumped while mining copper or picking alien daisies, might not be so appealing to you. This particular trait is worth your time though in a few different ways. If you put it in the perspective that there's already tons of things that already want you dead, what's a few more bad guys really? What you're actually gaining for being wanted is a buff to your health when it runs low, and no matter who you are, there's always a point where you'll get peppered by rounds or lasers from time to time, especially if you like to face tank pirates with a shotgun or a pistol. This trait isn't only great for bringing ships to your doorstep to dock with and fly home in order to add to your fleet, but the boost being wanted adds to your health pool can't be acquired anywhere else in the game. For those of you that want to live in style and don't want to build their home out of dirty iron ore and ship parts, Dream Home hits close to the top of the list as traits go. Selecting it will bring you one of Starfield's most luxurious properties, minus the furniture of course. Locating it isn't overly difficult since it populates in your activities log which can be found in the menus, and as you can see from the star map footage, all you need to do is hop on your ship and jump over to the Olympus system. You have tons of rooms and a module within the house that lets you deck it out with whatever you want, lavish furniture or just rooms full of gun racks, armor mannequins, and storage crates. While admittedly, it is a bit scary when you start out, since you're just a miner that starts with nothing, the 125,000 credit mortgage does seem a bit much, since you can buy almost two basic starships for that amount. However, you can't ignore the bulk payment by paying a weekly fee of 500 credits for as long as you want. In true Bethesda fashion, they decided to squeeze in a trait that matches the Elder Scrolls Oblivion adoring fan, aptly named Hero Worshipped. When first meeting your superfan, it's tough to put up with his constant talking, and it's not so clear as to how much of a help he's actually going to be as a crew member. However, if you can put up with being fawned over by this annoying clown shoe, he's actually a pretty good crew member. His skills work surprisingly well in situations on the ship, and like other companions, he'll provide you with occasional loot, and if you can't stand him, you can just make him go away, but it might take some time. 
If you want to be everyone's problem and plan on being dangerous every time you go up in a space, Taskmaster is definitely one of the best selectable traits so you don't end up on the alternates plaque in the ladies room. When you first land in New Atlantis and you're taking in the sights, you'll come across the viewport where you can hire some experienced crew members for some of the stickier situations that you'll run into. At first glance, you might be thinking to yourself, the cost of hiring even one crew member is highway robbery and there isn't even any highways around. But when you select the Taskmaster trait, sure, it'll make hiring a crew member far more expensive. However, if you hire a crew member that has experience in ship systems, the damage for that system during combat will jump back up to full once it's damaged more than 50%. Sure, I get it, 24,000 might sound like a bit much, and even if you manage to persuade them down, you're still going to be paying a handful, but you get what you pay for. Think of purchasing crew as a long-term investment, since doubling the upfront fee hurts a lot less in the future when money starts really pouring in. The payout is when you get a full heal of ship systems when you need it the most, and with the amount of ship-to-ship -ship combat you'll experience, a sudden boost to the engines could turn the tides. Not to mention that if you're intent on boarding ships, looting all the contraband items, and taking a new ship home and adding it to your collection, you may need all the help you can get, and as always, good hunting.